I don't know about you, but when it comes around this time, I think about our Heavenly Father. Yeah. He's so wonderful. He's so good. Yeah. He's so precious. For a long time, for 17 years, my father was not in my life. 17 years. And during that time, I didn't know God as my father. And I said, Lord, it's hard for me to express and call you father because I didn't know how to even, what that was like. So there was a message that came on over the pulpit and he talked about the importance of God being our heavenly father. Just look around you. He's provided all of your needs. He's given you that job. He's given you that house. He's given you that apartment. We ought to be thankful to him. He's so good. Hallelujah. And I remember something broke in my spirit. When we say break our walls down, something broke. And I begin to say, Father. Let's go. Hallelujah, Jesus. I said, Father. And I begin to call him. I said, Father. Hallelujah. Father. Jesus. Father. Father, I thank you. Father, I love you. Father, I appreciate you. I begin to think about all my life and how he's been there every step of the way. How he's been there to protect me from car accidents. How he's been there to heal my body from sickness. That's my father. And I love him so much. And I just want everybody to raise up your hands right now and just close your eyes and say, Father, I love you. Father, thank you. Father, I bless you today. You made a way out of no way. You made a way out of no way. You protected me. You provided for me. Yes. You provided for all of my needs. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anything that I've ever wanted, you always been there yes. for me every step of the way. You healed my body. Thank oh God, we thank you. Thank you. So that's why we sing just this little bit. And spirit break out. What yes. about Break our walls down. Spirit break out. Heaven come down. Can you sing spirit break out? Spirit break out. And break our walls down. Break our walls down. Break out. to you? Has he been a good father to you? Come on, raise your hand if he's been good. Hallelujah. He's done so much for you. I want to sing this song. It says, you've been a good, good father. I don't know if you know the song. We sang it once. I want you to listen to the words. Oh, when I heard a thousand what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whispers of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleasing, that I'm, I'm never alone, you're a good, good father, is who you are, is who Who I am. 
so undeniable. I, I can't hardly speak this piece so unexplainable. I, I can hardly think as you call. Raise your hands with us. Come on, just lift your voice. You're a good, good father. 
Praise the Lord, everybody. First of all, I would just like to say, Elder Johnson, would you hold this for me? All right. We have a bottle of oil from the Holy Land. My wife and I went in 2018, so we want you to use it at your discretion. All right. That's the real deal from Jerusalem. <laughs> Amen. Now, Elder Johnson, would you take that out for me, please? Pastor, would you just stand here? Okay. One Sunday morning, we were out front. The pastor looked like a football player. His head was steamy. His shoulders were steamy. <laughs> I said, Pastor, you're going to catch a pneumonia because old folks catch old pneumonia. I said, you're going to catch a new one you're standing out here in this cold weather. He said, I want to greet the members, and I just want to talk to them. And I said, well, I understand. I said, don't worry. The real deacon got your back. So this morning, we want to make a presentation to you. All right. All right. Amen. Amen. Thank you, man. Now, this is for our pastor. From my wife, this is from my wife and I. It's black. It's black. It's going to be. Oh, you hold. Thank you. This is black on the uh, one side, and it's reversible on the other side. Right. It also has a hood on it where he can go outside and be comfortable. This is going to be the first fitting, Pastor, so we're just going to try it, try it on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, he is. Yeah, men, men don't like other men playing under their chin, so we have to make that quick. So, Pastor, this is your new wardrobe. You can throw it around. Yeah. And uh, we did this for my former pastor, Bishop McMurray. We gave him a cape similar to And I want to say to you, Pastor, before the whole congregation, would all my guests please stand? Just my guests, would you all please stand? Pastor Short, I want you to know, as the Lord told Joshua, I'm going to tell you, so I was with Bishop McMurray, so shall I be with you. A willing servant, ready to work. Wow, can we give the Lord praise? Man, I'm feeling important. Come on, give God a hand praise. God bless you, Deacon Johnson, Elder Johnson. Wow, and it, it's all right, amen. <laughs> and it fits just perfect. God bless you. Thank you so much, Dr. Johnson. Amen, Deacon Johnson, Elder Johnson. God bless you so much, amen. We thank God. I know we're moving around and putting it all together, but I thank God for that presentation, amen. I felt, felt a little bit of... Spirit of Bishop McMurray. <laughs> I used to see him when he come to San Diego with his, with his, with his cape. <laughs> Amen. Thank you so much from my heart. I really sincerely appreciate that, that love token. Amen. We sincerely thank God. Amen. For all the fathers. Can we give God a hand praise for all the fathers? Amen. Amen. 
Amen. I put our program somewhere, so amen. Whoever's coming with the amen 100 Psalm, amen, if you would come at this time. Amen. Let's receive Sister Hazel as she comes at this time. Amen. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord, Jesus. <laughs> it's so wonderful to be in the house of the Lord. And we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for being in our presence. So let's all stand, I think, and uh, let's read the hundredth psalm. Amen. Together. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, hallelujah. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, saints, let's give God a hand praise. For the Lord is good. <laughs> hallelujah. For the Lord is good. And his mercy endureth forever. Again, we say praise the Lord to everyone, to all of our guests and visitors. Amen. If we missed you in that first wave, would you please stand if you're visiting us today? Amen. Would you please stand? Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give God a hand praise again for all of our visitors being with us this Sunday. Come on, Bethesda. Come on. Amen. We greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're so glad to have you with us today. We hope that you feel the presence of God. We thank God. Amen. We want you to know that this is a place where everybody is somebody and nobody is a stranger. And most importantly, you belong here. Awesome God. What a mighty God we serve and we celebrate him. I see evangelist Karen White in the house. Amen. Can we give God a hand praise for her? God bless you, evangelist. Amen. Stand up. Let's see who you are. This dynamic woman of God. We greet you in the name of the Lord. Come on, y'all. Show love to my auntie. Come on, y'all. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I appreciate her push down through the years. Amen. As a youth leader, teen leader in the council, I thank God. For, so good to see you. God bless you for being with us today. We honor God for First Lady Shorter. Amen. Amen. Stand, Lady Shorter, so the saints can... <laughs> real quickly. Amen. God bless you. Praise God. Amen. My good thing. <laughs> Amen. We thank and praise God for you. We thank and praise God for Lady May. Can we give God a hand praise for Lady May? Amen. Alexander in her absence, we salute God and we celebrate God for her. And most importantly, we thank God for you. Just look at somebody and tell them, I thank God for you. I thank God for you. I thank God for you. Okay. Amen. <laughs> I hope you meant that, but I meant it. Amen. I thank God for you, for your encouragement. Amen. And for your push, for your uh, perseverance, your press, even in times like these. Amen. With all that's going on in our world. Amen. It seems like everything is, is opening back up and we're trying to get back to normal. But I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Anybody just glad to be in church? <laughs> Amen. Some people are glad to be able to go back to the movie theater, glad to be able to go back to the mall, glad to be able to go out to the park. But thank God I'm found in the church. Can we just praise God for the church? Church triumphant. As flawed as they tried to make the church to be, amen, I thank God for the safe haven of his sanctuary. And certainly we, amen, understand what the psalmist was saying was, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Again, we greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're moving today, amen, want everybody to grab a gift, amen, grab a seed, amen, as right, our tithes and offerings, amen. We also want to welcome those of you who are enjoying this broadcast via, amen, our streaming uh, platforms. Uh, those on uh, Facebook Live and YouTube, amen, those who will come back and even watch this broadcast at a later time, we greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for your support, even in the midst of this pandemic, for those who have faithfully, amen, been part of our Sunday morning worship experiences, um, have been part of our midweek Bible studies, amen, we thank God for you being with us, amen, enjoying the presence of God with us. I hope you feel on the other side of the screen what we feel here in the sanctuary because it feels mighty, mighty. Mighty, mighty good. Amen. So again, we want to encourage everyone to give. For those that still want to give electronically, you can do such. We have a, a cash app, a dollar sign, Bethesda Temple LA. You can give via cash app. You can give via PayPal, uh, uh, PayPal, um, 
which is, um, I believe, uh, PayPal uh, at me uh, dot Bethesda Temple. Um, and I'm pretty sure they're going to put up on the screen. But we do have uh, PayPal. If you look us up, you can find us there, as well as Zelle. For those who have Zelle, send an offering via Zelle at our corporate email address, which is BTC4909, amen, at, at att.net. But also for those who desire, amen, to give, amen, electronically, we do have credit card mechanism, amen, in the house today. And you can also give, amen, just by check and cash, amen. But if you are giving, amen, and you're remote, amen, you can mail those, amen, to our corporate address, 4936 Crenshaw Boulevard, here in the city of Los Angeles, California. So again, you want to encourage everybody to give. We're 100% tie paying house. We believe in everybody giving, amen. So let's all, amen, uh, give as God has blessed us, amen. Uh, the, the fruit of being able to be tied in means that God has blessed you with something. Amen. And so God doesn't invest haphazardly. He invests in good ground. Amen. And God, amen, as the businessman he is, amen, we celebrate that God has placed something in us and given us something because he trusts us. Amen. So we want everyone to give, amen, accordingly. And uh, we're believing God for great things, even even right now. So those who want to give electronically, you're more than welcome to come right now to my right, your left. You can come, amen, and you can give your gifts electronically, amen. We're going to come to you today and serve you. That way we don't have to get up and try to, amen, continue, amen, our, our, our contact list uh, methods, amen, at least until we get a handle, better handle on what's going on, amen. But whatever you have, whether you're giving, amen, out in the virtual land or whether here, whatever it is, let's raise it up, amen, before our Savior because it belongs to him. Every hand lift even if you don't have to give lift your hand because we want God to put something in it amen and we're believing most importantly lift your heart and lift your mind amen that God would do great things amongst us in our midst father we thank you for every good gift oh God that you've given us we know it comes from you oh God we thank you oh God for how you've breathed on us how you've blessed us even in the midst of a pandemic we lack for nothing we want for nothing oh God and we ask oh God that this seed oh God that you have given us oh God that you would multiply oh God you would take it further than our our minds could even imagine oh God God. Father God, that our great, great, grand, great grandchildren be blessed by this seed that we sow, oh God. We believe you for generational wealth. We believe you for college tuitions being paid. We believe you, oh God, for refinancing. We believe you, oh God, for investments in business and things you're going to breathe on, oh God. But most importantly, we thank you, oh God, that this seed that's going into this house, oh God, will continue to expand the gospel, oh God. Let it go further than we could ever imagine, oh God. To the utmost parts of the world, oh God, we believe that this seed will take off and multiply and do great things beyond we could ever ask or think oh God we love you and we praise you for it this day in Jesus name and everybody said amen we're going to release you in the hands of our deacons amen let's receive amen them as they come at this time Father God. 
thank him and we appreciate him for he is good and his mercy endures forever at this time amen we want to amen extend the right hand of fellowship amen <laughs> i was gonna wait to the end of the service we're gonna do this right now <laughs> elder johnson pastor johnson do you mind coming at this time come on y'all let's give god a hand praise for him hallelujah <laughs> Amen. He's been with us, amen, and uh, streaming, and he came and was with us a couple weeks ago, and he says this is his church home. Amen. Hallelujah. Turn around Woo. and face, amen, the people. He comes to us with many years of experience, comes to us teaching, amen, and most importantly, amen, on the threshing floor, helping souls get birthed into the kingdom and through the administration, amen, of the Holy Ghost, amen, as only God can give it. He's a wise man, amen, whom the Lord has raised up and brought help. He's a, an answer to prayer. When we lost apostle, amen, I kept asking God to send me someone whom I can glean from, and he came ready to work. He came with books and material to help me in my study. And I thank and praise God. I celebrate God for him. I celebrate God for his wife as well. Come on, let's give God a hand. Praise. Amen. Amen. But he says this is his church home. Amen. So, Elder Johnson, Pastor Johnson, we just want to say God bless you. We want to welcome you. Amen. So much for being with us. Amen. We welcome you with the right hand of fellowship. You have all the rights and privileges of anybody else in there. Go in the kitchen, make you a sandwich, put your feet up at home. <laughs> Do something cool to drink. We love you. We say God bless you. And on behalf of myself and my wife and the entire Bethesda Temple Church family, we greet you in Lord Jesus Christ. And we welcome you into the fold here at Bethesda Temple Church. Amen. <laughs> I could not help but think of Bishop McMurray. Everybody know Bishop McMurray. He was saying a whole lot of stuff. <laughs> Before we preached, I, I thought about that. Well, you, you just, so, man, it's awesome, man. And I'm just glad to be here fellowshipping in this church, man. And I know that God has brought me here. And I told folks, I didn't leave on my own volition from the other church, but God pulled me out. He told me it's time to go. Amen. I'm not like uh, Abraham, not knowing where I'm going. You know, my philosophy in life, man, you know, don't throw your dirty water away till you get your clean water. Well, it don't make no difference right now. I got my clean water right here, Bethesda. Amen. God bless you, Pastor. Amen. Come on, Bethesda. Can we stand to our feet? Amen. Elder Johnson, I want you to come back real quick. <laughs> Amen. Now, for those of you that have been vaccinated and want to come give hugs, come do that. The rest of us, amen. Amen. We're going to give you, amen. Let's all give him, amen, the right hand, amen, a fellowship at this time. Amen. Okay. Amen. I'm telling me we got to do it, amen, the COVID compliant way, amen. So everybody, let's just give him, <laughs> amen, the right hand of fellowship. We love him and we'll greet him, amen, at another time. Amen. Let's give God a hand praise for Elder Johnson. As we receive him, amen, into the fold here at Bethesda Temple Church. If there's others, amen, we welcome you to join us, amen. God is doing something wonderful here, amen, at Bethesda. We greet you and we welcome you, amen, and we're so excited, amen, to have you with us, amen. Here's a couple few announcements, and then we have a presentation for the fathers, and then we're going to get, amen, out of your hair. But, amen, I want to take a moment again to encourage everyone to join us, amen, throughout the week for midday prayer, amen. At the noonday hour, you can join us on a conference call line for prayer. God's been meeting us, amen, every day, uh, Monday through Friday in prayer. We look forward to God continuing to do that even in the midst of everything that's going on. 
As, although, amen, the door's opening back up, we know we have an obligation to keep seeking God, amen, in the noonday hour. So join us for prayer. This is a ministry built on prayer, amen? So join us, amen, as we pray in the noonday hour, amen, every day at noon. We also encourage you to join us for midweek Bible class, amen. We're still virtual until we, amen, get some runway on that, but we'll be in the virtual space. So join us out on Facebook Live and YouTube for our midweek Bible classes, amen. And we also encourage you, amen, to... Uh, join us, amen, uh, uh, for our next in-person worship gathering. It's going to be on the 4th of July, all right? Amen. So once again, so for July, we'll be, amen, again, in the every other week format. So mark your calendars for July 4th, amen. We're trying to do something outdoors, all right? So as we finalize the ideas, we certainly hope that you'll come with something comfortable. We'll be outdoors and join fellowship on July 4th. Although it's a holiday, we still have church, amen? amen. <laughs> but we're going to do something, amen, that's fellowship-oriented, amen, and hopefully we find faith to do what we want to do. But if not, amen, we have provisions, amen, set up for that as well. And then also we hope that you'll join us on July 18th, amen, uh, will be our other in-person worship service as we get close to, amen, uh, that uh, date we'll be reminding you as well. So July 4th and 18th. And on those Sundays that we aren't in person, join us again out, amen, in virtual land. And as we get a handle on what's going on, amen, then we'll, amen, uh, uh, really start the re-entry and resume our, amen, weekly in-person worship gathering. Amen. So again, we hope that you'll stay connected, that you'll stay uh, in the vein. Amen. And most importantly, you'll stay prayerful with us even as we navigate. Amen. God's direction for this particular season. Amen. At this time, let's receive Lady Shorter. Amen. And I believe her committee, amen, has a presentation for the Father's Day. Let's receive her with a hearty praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Can I get some um, a little volume on my mic? I got something to say. Just I want to acknowledge everybody. I love you all. Real quickly, can we have all of our fathers stand for us? All of our Bethesda fathers, all of our guest fathers. Go ahead. It's okay. Amen. Now the reason why I have you stand is. We all know for Mother's Day, we go all out, yeah. don't we? Yeah. For Mother's Day, we want the corsage, the matching stockings, the toenails, the same way we don't go to ever. But it's important that we do the same for our fathers because we know they are a dime a dozen, right? We have to honor the good men that we have in our midst. And so we are going to do that as a church family. So on behalf of your Bethesda family, to our guests as well, I want everyone to get one. Make sure you raise your hand. Trust me, you don't want to miss out on this treat. Amen. Can you come down for me, all of our, our fathers? If you took part in someone's life raising them, we understand how that works, how that goes. We appreciate you as well. As the committee, as Pastor says, comes. <laughs> Amen. We have something special for you. Amen. So can we put our hands together for the fathers? Amen. Amen. These are examples of some good men. Amen. Amen. So on behalf of Bethesda, here's a little treat for you. We know that Pastor made sure that the women were taken care of and got them a nice yummy meal from Hot Bill Chicken. So you know what? We said, you know what, brothers? We're going to take it up a step. And so we're going to send you guys to Outback and Red Lobster. All right? On behalf of Bethesda, you get one or the other. Don't think we're sending you to both, though. <laughs> and there's a little sweet treat in there just in case. Your, your bill is past the amount. You know how that goes. <laughs> Amen. But we love you all. We thank you so much. And God bless you. Amen. Enjoy on behalf of your Bethesda family. God bless you. Can we say amen? Can we salute our fathers one more time? Amen. God bless you all. Amen. 
in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Got to get my bearings together. I got goodies. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. God is doing something wonderful in me. God is doing something wonderful in me. Something awesome and incredible where only he will get the glory. God is doing something wonderful, incredible and awesome. God is doing something wonderful in me. Come on, just clap your hands real light with it. <laughs> this day we glorify you we thank you for being in our midst father even as you speak now oh god we ask oh god that you would speak oh god not just to where we are oh god but where we're headed oh god father i pray oh god that you would bring a focus oh god concentration oh god to what your spirit is saying to the church for such a time as this we believe oh god that yokes are already broken that healing has already taken place, O oh God. That the mind has already been renewed and strengthened, O oh God. Let the word agree, O oh Taba, in the name of Jesus. Let it agree, O oh God. O oh God, with the things that you want to rattle, shake up in our lives, O oh God. Let it provide clarity. Let it provide focus and direction, O oh God, for times like these, O oh God. We need you now more than ever. Bless my brother. Bless my sister, O oh God. O oh God, in the name of Jesus, whatever they stand in need of, O oh God, let this word so nicely and jointly fit, O oh God where you want to do and what you desire to do in their life. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen and amen. Again, to the household of faith, we say praise the Lord. Amen. Let's get to the word. We're in the book of Mark, chapter 5. Can we celebrate God for these musicians? Amen. And for the music ministry today? Amen. 
Hallelujah. I know we can do better than that. It's a little bit better. Can we give God a hand praise? We thank God for these musicians. Amen. We thank and praise God. Amen. For all of you. Amen. Who are worshiping. Amen. Here, but also those of you who are worshiping online. Again, we say praise the Lord. We'll try not to, amen, bore you. Amen. Let us get out at a decent time for us to be able to celebrate our fathers. Amen. And if any time you should desire to go down in Jesus' name, just interrupt us. Amen. And come forth. Amen. Because we are, we are church. Amen. We don't believe we have to wait on a certain date or a certain time to do it. Amen. If you're feeling froggy, leap. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and we'll take you down in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Word of the Lord can be found today in the book of Mark, chapter number five. Again, a very special happy Father's Day to all of our fathers. Amen. Even to those, amen, who may not be natural fathers, but you've been a fatherly figure in someone's life, an uncle, a big brother, you help raise siblings, whoever you might be. Amen. Know that God sees you, amen, as a father, a protector, amen, an enabler, someone, amen, who provides provision, amen. You may embody that, amen, and not have necessarily physical children. Amen. So we celebrate you today as well. Amen. In the book of Mark chapter number five, verses number 21 through 24, and we're going to skip down uh, to verse number 35 through amen 43. When you find it, will you say, I'm there? I'm there. All right. Amen. We'll wait on a couple people. I'm going to ask that you would stand in reverence, amen, for the word of God. Mark chapter number five, those that physically can, amen, if you would stand Here we get at the reading of God's holy word, Mark chapter number five, verses number 21 through 24. And I'm going to skip down to verses number 35 through 43. Here we get the reading of God's holy word. And when Jesus was passed over again by the ship unto the other side, much people gathered unto him and he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet. And besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. Let's go down to verse number 35. While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain, which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he saith unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. Somebody just say, only believe. And he suffered no man to follow him, save Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. And he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and seeth the atonement. And there that and they and them that wept and wailed greatly. And when he was come in, he saith unto them, Why make ye this ado and weep? This damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. But when he had put them all out, <laughs> uh, he taketh the father and the mother of the damsel, and them that were with him. And he entereth into where the damsel was lying. And when he took the damsel by the hand, he said unto him, Talatha kumhumi, which is being interpreted, damsel, I say unto thee, arise. And straightway the damsel arose and walked. And check this out. For she was of the age of 12 years. And they were astonished with great astonishment. And he charged them straightly that no man should know it and he commanded that something should be given her to eat father once again we ask that this word germinate that it bring revival and resuscitate our faith even right now we believe you for it in jesus name amen and amen before you take your seats just look at somebody and tell them daddy's home to stay just look around and tell somebody else daddy's home to stay I feel like having some church all by myself today. So if you got to go, amen, I certainly understand it. Amen. I feel like just having some church. Daddy's home to stay. Uh, my God. Hallelujah. All throughout, again, this world today in this country, amen, we are celebrating fathers and fatherhood. We're celebrating, amen, this day that's been carved out to acknowledge 
and the work and the sentiment, amen, and certainly um, the efforts of those who have naturally brought children to birth, amen, and who have persevered in the midst of life's challenges to still, amen, take care of those children. There's a difference between a father and a dad. I understand that perspective. Anybody can be a father, <laughs> uh, but not everybody can be a dad. Dad is a term of endearment. Father certainly is, amen, a byproduct of, an, of a selfish act, if, 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 if you follow <laughs> what, I, what I mean in that, in that rhetoric. But certainly, amen, we celebrate fathers. And some of us, that's a sensitive subject because many of us have had a lack or a void of fatherness, uh, fatherlessness in our lives specifically. It was one thing that plagues our community, amen, and many of the things that I have become, I guess, a bit more, amen, just open to since I've been home in the pandemic. At home in the pandemic, it just seems like I just, this, this, this Maury Povich spirit. <laughs> Uh, every night, just, amen, it seems like every other day somebody's on fighting for paternity or amen, it just appears as if there's always a struggle, but more cases than other, it appears to be people of our persuasion or people of our amen, of necessity, amen, it seems as if fatherlessness plagues the African American, amen, community, and it's a subject we don't like to talk about, it's a subject we don't like to talk about. Um, but it's the cause of a lot of, of our children and grandchildren, amen, having instability in their upbringing. We specifically don't like to talk about it in church. When you look in our congregations, amen, the, uh, the, uh, the predominance of individuals that make up our congregations are women, mothers. In many cases, single mothers who have had to bear the load of being priest of the home, amen, and bearing of the children and disciplinarian. And it's an awkward conversation to have, so we don't like to have the conversation. But then we wonder why we have so many identity issues with our children. We wonder why we have systemic issues that appear to perpetuate from generation to generation, where it seems as if absenteeism is just something that we excuse. We don't like to have these conversations because in many cases it causes us to confront, uh, uh, to confront spirituality and to confront our relationship with God. God's structure and God's design has always been, amen, for man to have a help meet, but in the confines of marriage for man and woman to help, amen, in the structure and upbringing and raising of the children. Somewhere along the line, amen, we as men have, amen, kind of have kind of fallen out of place have refused to take ownership of our personal responsibility. In many cases, it's because as men, we have this pride and this ego that we can handle situations without instruction. <laughs> I'm guilty of that. Every now and then, you know, my wife will tell me, just go to the box <laughs> and read the instructions. But me, I'd rather sit there and, and, and twiggle and twirl uh, with the screws to put it together because I think based upon my familiarity and uh, my experience in life, I should be able to put together something as simple as a TV tray. <laughs> And then six hours later, <laughs> goes my wife to save the day. <laughs> well, that's what ends up happening. There's something wired within us that resists correction, that resists amen. And in many cases, when amen, Adam fell and Adam, amen, and Eve committed their sin, if there was one thing that man appeared to do, amen, is, is, is run away from God. And it appears as if we have a lot of men in this generation who are running away from not just their responsibility, but running away from God. Definitely. And it's the plight that we find ourselves in. So today is uh, uh, for all of the celebration and for as much as we love to give the shine, amen, and, and we love celebrating our mothers. When it comes to Father's Day, restaurants ain't as packed out as they are on Mother's Day. The sentiment isn't always necessarily there because mother has had to step in and become the stabilizing force. And so, in many cases, I think part of the challenge that we have as preachers of the gospel is we have to be relevant to the time. It causes us to be greater examples. It causes us to confront the culture by having the necessary conversations. We don't act out of lust. We don't act out of emotion. We have to go back to what God's construct is and what God's desire was. And most importantly, if we make a mistake, the mistake should never cause us to be in isolation. Mistake was never, amen, the, the, the mistake that I made was never a desire for him, amen, to run away from the presence of God, never to run away from his responsibility. God met Adam in the cool of the day, and so the responsibility that Adam had was to meet God in the place that he was supposed to meet God. 
but he ran away. I hear God saying today, men don't run away from your responsibility. I know it's uncomfortable. It's awkward. We're going to let the air out. Trust me, we're going to the mountain. <laughs> Amen. But not before we address what's necessary so that we can continue to, amen, impart into a generation what a degree of normalcy is. It's not cool to have kids all around the town. It's not cool to leave somebody, amen, hanging to take care of your irresponsibility. And most importantly, it's also a challenge to our women as well, that as bad as it gets, leave space for that direction. Leave space for that correction. Leave space for the men. Amen. Don't let them out of their responsibilities. Amen. <laughs> All right. Let's go. <laughs> Amen. I just, Lord, just place it in my spirit. He said, say that. Amen. All right. All right. Amen. But nevertheless, all throughout scripture, we have seen the challenges associated with parenting, fatherhood, decision making. It's not always something, amen, that has been, amen, a comfortable conversation. Whether we're talking about Abraham having to bring, amen, Isaac to the altar, or whether it's, amen, even, amen, a Jacob with weary eyes having to, amen, play the blessing upon Ephraim or Manasseh, amen. We've all throughout scriptures have seen the challenges and the turmoils associated with parenting and fatherhood. And part of the dynamic is that sometimes we have to change our, 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 our psyche associated with God's sovereignty, what do you mean? What happens when you do everything right and you still have challenges? What happens if you're walking upright, living for God, walking in holiness, amen, and things still fall apart? What happens when you really place it in your heart, amen, to do it God's way and the outcome still doesn't turn out the way you desire for it to turn out? In many cases, when you're faced with this, it could cause your heart to close up. And that's where I think this message really was stirred and really was placed into my spirit because sometimes in waiting on God, as we wait in the proverbial waiting room of God, waiting for God to move, sometimes his sovereignty confuses us. Sometimes his purpose will just doesn't make sense. We love to read the scripture, all things work together for the good, but sometimes we misinterpret the scripture. The scripture doesn't say all things work together for our good. All things work together for the good. <laughs> Oof. Oh, yeah, didn't mean to have Bible study. <laughs> uh, so we've been going, all things are working for my good. That's not the word. Love the song. That's not the word. The word is saying for the good. Somehow, some way, when we're dealing with the misfortunes of life, we must be calculated and understanding that somehow, some way, some good's coming out of it, even if it means the good doesn't benefit me. And sometimes that's tough for us to swallow. And if you aren't careful, you'll close up your heart. Can I introduce you to a man by the name of Jairus? Uh, if, you, if you follow New Testament scripture and the dealings of the synagogue, let me just place this in your spirit. Amen. The synagogue, amen, is literally an outshoot from, amen, Solomon's temple that was destroyed while many of the children of Israel, amen, were in exile. And so when we see the semblance of the, amen, new, amen, testament constructs of the Bible, amen, local worship and instruction was necessary. And as a result of it, when the Jews returned to Jerusalem to rebuild, build the temple many places amen uh, that they would go start these little pop-ups or assemblies would become known as synagogues and local elders and leaders would have general oversight they were like little pastors but you really don't hear pastors too much until Paul starts teaching you don't really hear amen too much about priests too much until amen you get to the constructs of what Paul would begin to write in his epistles but nevertheless you had these synagogues that were raised up offshoots of the temple where you had an appointed ruler or layman who was responsible for the care of the building was responsible for selecting participants to operate in ministry and so the ruler had an assistant in many cases one to take care of the duties but his job and responsibility was to deliver the sacred scrolls to give the teaching and most importantly to help the Jews and those who were scattered to return to a place of worship it was a 
special kept place. This is known as the synagogue. Jesus, amen, in his journeys, amen, customarily would go to synagogues in his hometown of Nazareth on the Sabbath. He would begin to teach in the public ministry. When he is introduced to ministry, he would find him in, amen, the synagogue. He preached there frequently and throughout the land. In his early ministry, he healed a man in a synagogue in Capernaum. And so the result of this literally, amen, is you had different rulers, those of prestige, those, amen, amongst, amen, the assemblies that would raise up and be known as rulers. And this is what introduces us uh, to this man by the name of Jairus. He is a ruler. He is one who has been given great responsibility. His job and his charge is to ensure that the instruction of the word of the Lord comes forth, uh, that those who are participating, amen, in offerings unto God do so with care. He is one, I believe, who is sincere in his efforts. He's one, amen, who literally, amen, can be seen at the altars in the day praying and making atonement and sacrifice and doing all of the things necessary, amen, to honor God's covenant according to the laws that were presented from generation to generation from Moses. However, he's got a problem. He can't find his answer in church. What happens when you go to Sunday service after Sunday service? <laughs> prayer meeting after prayer meeting. Ah, what happens when you go and log into Wednesday night Bible class? What happens when you go on a 40-day fast? If we, if we still do that, right? <laughs> ah, yes. Yeah. So what happens when we seek God in all earnest and with all sincerity and we cannot find the answer where we are? The Bible says that Jairus, although he's coming into church, believing God for a miracle concerning his, uh, his daughter, although he has done everything that he thinks was within his wheelhouse to find a resolution for his home, there is a void. Uh, what happens when you come to church looking for deliverance and nobody can lay their hands on you and produce the deliverance? What happens when you show up expecting the mama, uh, big mama with the special prayer handkerchief <laughs> uh, to anoint it and put a little spackle on it and lay it on you, but nothing happens. I can imagine that he had tried everything, had gone through every uh, liturgical, amen, order and necessary custom, amen, to get an outcome different for his daughter, but he could not find it in the synagogue. He couldn't find the answer in church. So he has to leave church to find Jesus. <laughs> Uh, can, I, can, I, can I shadow your word for a minute and just tell you sometimes you have to leave church to find Jesus. <laughs> Look at somebody tell them, I know that's right. Uh, yes, he don't say nothing else. I know that's right. Uh, because sometimes I found Jesus on the side of the road. Sometimes I found Jesus. Well, shout out. Uh, I found Jesus in my living room. I wish somebody would help me praise God ah, that he's not just constricted to the house. I wish I had a witness out there. Ah, yes. Ah, yes. Some of you found Jesus on the way to making bad decisions. Ah, some of you found Jesus in the most inopportune places, but I'm so glad that I found Jesus. The scripture says uh, that he has exhausted all of his efforts and energies, and he hears Jesus is showing up on the coast. I've heard about this guy. Ah, I'm praying, and, and I, if he can do something for my daughter, uh, maybe, that will, maybe that will happen. Uh, uh, may, may, just maybe something. And the Bible says that he meets Jesus in faith by something that he says strategically. The scripture says that as he jumps on his feet, amen, and as he approaches Jesus, he, he falls on his feet in worship. In a posture of worship, he shows up and he makes his petition. Uh, he sought him. The scripture says that he besought him greatly. He approaches Jesus with all earnest. He says, my little baby girl is at the point of death. He says, I've prayed, I've prayed, but I pray thee. <laughs> Come and lay hands on her that she may be healed and she shall live. It's interesting that, 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 that he has a different perspective of Jesus. Uh, he doesn't just say, uh, I believe that you can heal the situation. Uh, he says, I know that you can heal her and she will live. There's a difference. There's a difference. I believe, amen, that Jairus was asking for wholeness. <laughs> uh, because some of us come to church and just say, take the toothache away. <laughs> uh, 
no, no, I believe Jairus' spirit was, not only can you take the toothache away, but you can help her uh, never to have to deal with that issue ever again, that it hinders her life. Can I tell you that some of you need a new perspective of God. Stop asking him for just tangible, short, temporary, 48-hour expired blessings uh, uh, and start asking God to do something that shifts my entire life and my whole world. He says, if you lay hands on her, not only can you fix the situation, but she shall live. Oh, my God. He says, come lay hands on her uh, and that she may live. And Jesus went with him. <laughs> ah, oh, I get excited about this portion of the story because Jesus meets his faith and gets to walk it with Jairus. Can you imagine uh, when you come before God with humility uh, and he starts walking with you? Uh, the Bible says Jesus did uh, Jesus wanted to take a personal interest in inventory in the life of Jairus' daughter that he doesn't just send the word like he does with the centurion. No, the Bible says he went with him. Ah, uh, uh, yes, he gets up and he starts walking. Ah, uh, what a confidence you have uh, when Jesus is walking with you. Ah, uh, uh, yes, what an esteem you have when Jesus is walking with you. Ah, uh, but as he's walking, something interesting happens. People start thronging Jesus. Uh, okay. We, we go into my house <laughs> uh, and then all of a sudden he gets interrupted. This is why we skipped all those verses in between the story of Jairus' life. Because if there's one thing that we fathers must learn is not to get frustrated in the pause. Look at somebody and tell them, don't get frustrated in the pause. I'm, I'm going to help myself today. Uh, uh, yes, don't get frustrated in the pause. Because, because while he's going to handle Jairus' situation, there's a pause that takes place. There's a woman with an issue of blood. <laughs> uh, that somehow, some way, she's been waiting 12 years for deliverance. And the Bible says that uh, as he's headed to Jairus' house, there's a woman who has spent everything she had. If she could spend more, she would spend more. She's hit rock bottom. But somewhere uh, in the midst of him walking with Jairus, something happens and the virtue comes out of his body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What happens when you've done everything the right way? And somebody touches Jesus in a manner that stops him from doing what he was supposed to do for you. This woman's faith did something to Jesus that stopped him in his tracks. <laughs> this woman's uh, faith did something that all of the virtue came out of Jesus, which means that I couldn't even, if I got to Jairus' house, I couldn't even do something because she did something uh, with her faith that took the virtue out of my body. Jesus uh, literally uh, has to deal, amen, with this matter and, and sow this woman back up. Uh, yes, and the Bible says that after he says, who touches me? And after he, amen, heals her and makes her whole. And after he deals with her, he says, daughter, thy faith have made thee whole. Go in peace, uh, be whole of thy plague. And the scripture says that as Jairus is waiting for Jesus to do what only Jesus can do. As he's walking and he's on pause because he knows when he left his daughter, she was in a critical condition. He gets a message from somebody in his house. Uh, uh, what happens when the interruptions come in our life and somebody else gets blessed, but it means something dies on me? You ever been there before when you've been grocery shopping? Ah, yes, and you've been looking for the last, uh, looking for brown sugar, and somebody shows up at the same time that you show up, and they get the brown sugar before you, and you say, now nah, I've been walking around this grocery store uh, for an hour and a half wanting this brown sugar, and somebody gets right up in front of me. It's hard to be happy for somebody else when it was supposed to be yours. Ah, uh, Okay. Maybe that's not your example. Uh, you've been walking, you've been driving around Westfield all day uh, trying to get you a parking spot. You see that parking spot right in front of the door. Uh, yes, and somebody gets there right at the same time as you. It's hard to celebrate somebody else's blessing when you know you had your eyes on it the whole time. 
Uh, uh, can you imagine what happened? Uh, what happened when he hears uh, that if Jesus wouldn't have got stopped, if Jesus wouldn't have got interrupted, uh, if Jesus would have just kept walking with me, and uh, and, and and this woman, as as much as I empathize with her story uh, of her being in need of healing for twelve years, I've got a twelve-year-old daughter lying at the point of death. Uh, the Bible says, "Amen." That uh, that 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 uh, uh, not only does he get this 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 news, uh, but but a dagger gets put in it as well, because the person that came didn't just come and say, "Your daughter is dead." They would have the audacity to say, "Don't trouble the master." Ooh, could, could you imagine uh, uh, what might have been going through Jairus' mind? Could you imagine what he might have been perplexed with? I was this close to having it. I did everything right. I fell at my knees. I worshiped. I was patient. I had the faith to believe. And now somebody's telling me don't even bother to bring him to the house because the situation is dead. It's interesting, the people closest to him uh, didn't have the faith enough to believe who he was. <laughs> ah, my God. Uh, but I, I hear God saying, I hear God saying, uh, this is where it's pivotal for us fathers to be patient in the midst of the pause. Because the pause could have you take a different approach to Jesus. Uh, if you aren't careful, your heart can get closed up to the condition and you can give up all hope when you hear the when you hear the rhetoric of the people closest to you saying it's a lost cause <laughs> ah, when you hear people telling you don't even bother Jesus this situation is dead ah, when you think about how faithful you've been to God and how you've given your tithes and how you served how you've been upright uh, and how you've walked upright before him it could do something to your heart when you say you know what this 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 is enough you ever been there before if you would be honest, you've been there before. So I'm doing everything right, and I just can't win for losing, even when I have the greatest helper, <laughs> even when I have the comforter with me. It seems like it's all literally obliterating right in front of me. The Bible says that as he it got this news that Jesus heard the word that was spoken, and he speaks, and he says something to him. He says, he says be not afraid, but only believe. <laughs> um, there are things that come in our life that the world would, amen, put an ideal in your mind to tell you that this is over. <laughs> the world would come and put an ideal in your mind to tell you to stop believing. <laughs> the world says there's no sense uh, in dragging this thing out. There's no sense uh, in making the Savior be prolonged and when he could be providing healing to other situations. But I hear God saying, whatever you do, don't close up your heart. Uh, uh, don't close up your ability to believe don't close up uh, uh, your ability to believe that if God got this far with you uh, uh, that he cannot make it to your home uh, uh, the Bible says that Jesus uh, uh, tells Jairus uh, uh, I still plan on making good uh, I still plan on getting to your house to do what you've asked me to do uh, the Bible says that as Jesus uh, makes up his mind uh, uh, yes uh, to travel to the house of Jairus the Bible says uh, uh, that he's strategic in who he asks to come with him he brings Peter he brings brings James and he brings John. Ah, uh, yes, along with Jairus. Uh, it's interesting how uh, the pauses in your life can push you into a new perspective of God. Uh, how if you can have faith, ah, uh, yes, in the midst of the pause, uh, it can put you in exclusive company. Uh, the moment I would have heard Peter, James, and John, uh, uh, my feet would have got light. Uh, uh, because every time God was going to reveal something, uh, he always brought the sons of thunder. Uh, uh, so the moment when Jesus said, Peter, James, and John, uh, it should have been something leaping up on the inside of him. God's about to show out. Uh, God's about to show up. Uh, but if you can make it through this pause in life, uh, if you can survive this season of waiting, uh, I hear God saying, I'm going to put you in exclusive company. Uh, because there's only certain things I can reveal uh, to Peter, James, and John. Uh, uh, there are only 
only certain things that I can show them. Ah, yes, I hear God saying, if you can survive this pause, you are going to be invited into exclusive company. The Bible says that as they show up, they are met with professional mourners. I need you to go with me and travel with me back to the scene. Ah, yes, of the Middle Eastern affairs. Ah, yes, whenever somebody died, in order to provide support, to the family uh, they went out on Craigslist they went out and offered up uh, they went out uh, and got professional mourners uh, to assist with the mourning uh, just in case a family uh, just in case a family uh, didn't have a great support system uh, they went out and rented and loaned professional mourners uh, to show up to assist with the mourning uh, um, the Bible says uh, uh, yes as they show up they had they had weepers on site uh, yes they're actors they're paid pretenders can I tell some of you that sometimes God will bring a pause to your life so that you can get rid of the actors and the pretenders uh, can you look at your neighbor and say neighbor I give you permission in this most critical season of your life to get rid of the pretenders and the actors in your life. Ah, what a strange thought that you've paid people to support you. Woo. Ah, what an interesting thought ah, that you've invested resources into people ah, that really don't have your back. I hear God saying, ah, the place I want to take you ah, and where I want to push you into, ah, you have permission to get rid of people ah, who do not validate the things I want to do in your life. Ah, you have permission to delete numbers. Ah, you have deletion, ah, 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 permission to delete emails. Ah, you have permission not to call certain people back. I look at somebody and tell them it's time to get rid of the pretenders. I it's time to get rid of the actors. I it's time to get rid of the people that mean you no good. I God says I'm going to vacate this space I because I'm getting ready to do something eyes haven't seen. I neither ears have heard. I neither have entered into the hearts of men. I come on, clap your hands and give God praise. I, I feel the wind of God pushing me in here. Yeah, God says stop investing in people who are pretending. Ooh, that's a word for somebody. Stop investing in people who do not validate the faith you have. Ooh, I feel somebody getting free right now. Don't you walk up out of this house uninspired or unempowered to let go of people who are not invested in your next level in God. Oh my God. But look at what happens in the text. The Bible says that these people who were paid to weep ended up laughing. Ooh, what an interesting thought. I paid you to weep but when I showed up with God who had all power in your hand, your tears went to a chuckle. Your tears went to comic relief. The Bible says that these people that you were paying for, they're literally laughing at you. And God told me to tell some of you, be strengthened this day. Be empowered this day to dismiss everybody from the house who doesn't see this miracle I'm getting ready to perform as anything more than a quick cheap laugh. The devil is a liar. I hear God saying even right now, some people got to get about this service because I'm getting ready to release a faith in this house and everybody not in favor of this supernatural breakthrough. God says there is the door. That means everybody that's still here believes God's going to do it. Lean on your neighbor and say neighbor I believe this is the service that it's gonna happen some of you looked at me squeeze your neighbor and say neighbor since you're still here I'm here to tell you this is the service that it has to happen somebody clap your hands and give the Lord praise no no 
another neighbor and say, neighbor, do you hear what God is saying? Only people in this house that can stay in this house are the people that can believe that God is more than able. And if you're one of those people, I need you to open up your mouth and give him the loudest praise you can. Like you believe it's on the tip. Like you believe you're getting ready to walk in it. Lift your voice in this house and give God a praise. Like you know it's getting ready to happen. Praise him. Help me right now. Give God a praise for what he's getting ready to do. My family's coming back together. My healing is in the house. My deliverance is in the house. My wayward children are coming back. Somebody help me, help me, help me, help me, help me. Praise God like you believe it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lean on your neighbor and say, neighbor, I give you permission to cancel every competing thought that's coming against what God wants to do right now. Tell somebody else, I give you permission to kick everybody out of your life that's not in agreement with the supernatural things that God desires to do. Stir it up in here right now and clap your hands and give God a praise like you believe it. Jairus in great company. Here is Jairus with the big boys. And the Bible says that as Jesus enters the room, as Jesus closes the door on people who aren't in agreement, the Bible says that as he comes forth, he says, he says, Tabakamula. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> he says, damsel, arise. Damsel, get up. The only way things are going to get up in your life is when you learn to close the door on people, thoughts and things that aren't in agreement with what God desires to resurrect. I hear God saying shorter go deeper he says shorter what I was trying to minister to J. Iris is I was always coming to his house I started walking with him and things fell apart I started walking with him and it seemed like things were dying but if there's one thing that God told me to tell this house tell my people I don't want you to close up your heart I hear God say there are some things that you've been closed up on there's some miracles that you said maybe it's not for me there are some dreams and some visions and some things you've been wanting God to do but I hear God saying you have surrendered to the voice of negativity you've taken it personal the people who are mocking you you've taken it personal the people who are scorning you but I hear God saying not only am I coming in that room I'm coming to your heart and I hear the Lord saying if you open your heart if you believe him God is saying if you have Jairus' spirit not only will I heal but I'll stay for good and I hear God saying today is the day I remind you with an open heart daddy's home to stay squeeze your neighbor as we get out of here and we say neighbor open your heart one more time turn around and find a neighbor not too busy texting and say neighbor God says open your heart this time when you let him in not only is he stepping in with healing but he's staying for good I feel like going crazy all by myself say neighbor I'm so glad I made 
the decision to open my heart. I'm so glad I didn't let the waiting put a muzzle on my heart. I'm so glad that my pause didn't cause me to panic. I'm so glad the report of the devil did not block God from getting to my heart. I'm so glad. I'm so glad I did not allow the tears I cried to keep God from getting to my heart. I feel like having church. Grab your neighbor and say, neighbor, daddy's home to stay. Open your heart and let him in. Open your heart and let him blow your mind. Open your heart and let him take up residence. Somebody give him praise. Say yeah. Say yeah. Grab a neighbor and say neighbor. I'm so glad. Come to my heart. Tell him when he comes, he does not come empty handed. He brings joy from my tears. He brings beauty from my ashes. He brings a new perspective. I wish you had a neighbor that opened up their heart. Say, neighbor, I'm a witness. When you let him in, renew your joy. I'm so glad when daddy comes, he takes your morning and he gives you dancing. I wish somebody would say, neighbor, I'm so glad daddy's home to stay. I'm so glad I did not let the interruption of somebody's miracle keep me from believing that God was more than able. I'm so glad Block my heart. Daddy's home to stay. Praise him like you believe it. Praise him like you receive it. Praise him like you believe it. Praise him like you know he's in there to stay. say look at that neighbor and say neighbor when daddy comes he gives you the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness say neighbor God can't be in here and you be that quiet God can't be in here and you sitting up in there like you don't know what to do I need everybody to jump up on your feet and give him Praise that you can. Praise him like he's here to stay. Praise him like you believe he's more than able. Praise him like you've tried him and you know him.
Don't you lose faith in the pauses of your life. Daddy, don't you lose hope even when it seems like God is blessing out of turn. He says, this thing that I did for Jairus, I want my people to see. Not only was it a natural blessing, it was a spiritual sign not to allow the discouragement of the, of the voices of the laughter to close your heart up. God is saying it might be a room, but it's your heart. I have the power to speak to dead situations so long as you don't close up your heart. Look at somebody and tell them, don't close up your heart. God can still get in there. God can still make the way. Look at somebody and tell them, God can still do it. God is still faithful. God is still a provider. God is still our portion. God is still our help. God is still our all in all. And even though it seems like somebody else got in front. Whew, ah, even though it seemed like somebody got the miracle first. Whew, God is saying, I'm still God. And as long as you don't close up your heart, I can still get in there. He says something interesting. As we close the text, he says, don't tell anybody about this. Now, this is weird. <laughs> Why would you want me? <laughs> and I've been praying in church and, and putting your name on the prayer list. And I've got the prayer warriors praying and we're touching the green. You don't want me to tell anybody. He said, it wasn't my time yet to reveal that I am the resurrector. They can't handle this. But it was even a greater revelation for J. Iris that he was made company to the resurrecting power of God before anybody else because he chose to have faith in his paws. God is saying there's certain revelations I'm going to give you if you can just be patient in these pauses. Jesus is our father and he's coming to our house. He's saying, I'm not just coming for a visit. I'm coming for permacy that you may have life and life more abundantly. If you have the faith not to close up, even when people are given a reason for you not to keep walking with God, He's saying, I'm going to give you a greater revelation of who I am. I am the resurrection. I am the life. You're here today. You may be standing in need of something. Whether it's salvation or just prayer. If you desire prayer, you could come to the altar or you could stay where you are. Whatever you so desire. But if you know you need a touch from God, come on right now. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. We're equipped to serve you. Hallelujah. If you just desire prayer right where you are, just wave your hand. We got you. He knows. Woo. If you desire water baptism in the name of Jesus or the infilling of the Holy Ghost, this is your time as well. Don't close up your heart. You know you need it. Come on right now. Come on, wave those hands at me. Come on, Father, in the name of Jesus, you know what we stand in need of. You know what the burdens and the issues of our heart are. Father, whose name is Jesus. Father, touch right now. Wherever we're standing in between two opinions or two points, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would guide, that you would comfort, that you would touch even right now, oh God. The issue of the heart, the burden of the heart, oh God, the tribulation of the heart, oh God. I pray, oh God, right now, oh God, that you would send a breaking right now, that you would renew the heart, oh God. Open us up, oh God, to bless you one more time, to receive one more time, to get an impartation one more time. Father, in the name of Jesus, where our hands are raised, oh God, meet us right now. The antennas of our hearts are raised, oh God. Oh God, minister to our broken places. Oh God, minister to our fragilities, oh God. Minister 
minister, oh God, to the places, oh God. The secret parts nobody knows about, oh God. You can get to it, oh God. You can get through the frustration. You can get through the mockery. You can get through the shame, oh God. Oh God, our hearts are open. Our hands are lifted, oh God, even right now. Oh God, restore. God, bring restoration. God, bring deliverance. God, bring a second chance, oh God. God, bring renewal. God, bring favor, oh God. This day, oh God, we believe you. We believe, oh God, that you're not finished. You're not done yet. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, oh God, that you would help us get our grip back on our faith. Help us, oh God, to stand bold, oh God, until you make a way of escape, oh God. We know you to be a strong deliverer. We know you to be a provider and a healer, oh God. You're a good father, oh God. And in confidence, we wave our hands, oh God. Oh God, save our ship. Oh God, speak to every marriage, oh God. Speak to our singleness, oh God. Bring, speak to our employment situations, oh God. Speak to our financial affairs, oh God. Speak, oh God, to the things that we're in need of right now, oh God. We stand in need of help, oh God. And you are our helper. You are our source of our strength and the strength of our life, oh God. And our confidence in you, oh God. We believe you and we trust you. And we even declare and decree that it is done. And it is so. And revival is here. And healing is here, oh God. And the way of escape is made, oh God. Oh God, we trust you right now. We believe you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, clap your hands and give God praise if you believe it. Oh, come on, clap your hands if you believe it. Come on, everybody in the house, come on. Let's raise this up. God is the joy and the strength of my life, say. God is the joy and the strength of my life. He moves all pain, misery, and strife. He promised to keep me, never to leave me. He'll never, ever come short of his word. I've got to fast and pray, stay in the narrow way, and keep my life. touch come on down if you desire water baptism in Jesus name this is your time even those of you who are watching online if you desire prayer or water baptism in Jesus name or the infilling of the Holy Ghost you can meet us here at 4909 Crenshaw Boulevard in the city of Los Angeles California we're here to touch and agree with you we're here to pray with you we're praying that God that will smile upon you, amen, that he would answer your petitions in prayer. We touch and agree with you right now for whatever God desires to do in your life because he is the strength of our life. God is, yes he is, God.
Is he your all in all? <laughs> Is he your all in all? Amen. Let's give God a hand praise one more time for his word. I'm going to ask my big sis, evangelist Karen White, if she would come and just render the benediction. Amen. We thank God for her being with us. We thank God for you all being with us today. Amen. We trust and believe. Amen. That you will go out and celebrate your fathers today. Amen. Again, we say happy Father's Day to all the fathers. To all of our guests and visitors, we thank God for you being with us today, for celebrating with us today. Amen. We're going to shake your hands like this today. <laughs> God bless you. I'm going to throw my cape on. All right. <laughs> I hope to greet many of you as we can, Wakanda style, whatever, you know. <laughs> amen. To all of those watching, amen, via our stream service, we say God bless you as well. We thank you for being with us. We thank you for your patience, even in our presentations today. May heaven smile upon you. May the grace of God go with you. Let's receive at this time, dynamic woman of God, and certainly no stranger to us here at Bethesda Temple Church. Amen. Evangelist Karen White. Let's receive her in Jesus' name. God bless you. Father God, we praise you. God, we magnify you. God, we honor your name. God, we thank you for the service on today, God. We thank you for the word on today, God, to let, to let us know, God, that you're with us in the midst of the pause. God, you're with us right now. Now, God, bless the furtherance of this day. God, we ask you that you would bless every pastor, every every father, strengthen every father right now, God. You know where every, where every father is right now, God. So we ask you, God, that you would have your way, God, this day, God. Heal some father on today, God. Deliver, some, deliver a father on today, God. Make a way out of no way for a Father on today, God. We praise you right now, God, and we magnify your name, God. And we thank you once again for this word on today, God. We appreciate you, God, for being the best father, God, anybody can have. And so, God, we put our hands together, God, for you being the best father. Uh, God, being there for us all the time in the midst of the pause, God, we thank you for being there, and we appreciate you. And God bless this day, God. And we thank you right now, God, and we believe you, God, and we trust you right now. And we thank you, God, that fathers are that are not saved. God, that they'll be saved. God, that they'll be filled with the Holy Ghost. God, that they'll be delivered right now. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. With all, of my with all my guests from Greater Bethany, City of Refuge, if you all would just come down front, all of my guests, so we can do just a little fellowship. All of my guests that came in today, Brother Harris and wife. If you all just come down on this side, all of my guests, I just want to see who all's here. Amen. Just con we're going to congregate over here just for a minute. Thank you.